Amen. Amen. God is so good. Amen. Why don't you turn to your neighbor and say, God is good. God is good. Amen. I love communion. I love communion because we can come into the presence of God. You know, in the Old Testament, there's a couple of different stories where the, the people who were worshiping, it says that they went and they had a meal in the presence of God. And even in the tabernacle of Moses and in the temple of Solomon, there was a place. There was the table of bread that symbolized, it symbolized the word of God and, this, and the, the, the presence of God. But it was also a place where people could commune with God, have a meal together with God, sit and eat together with God. And it's God's provision and his love and his welcoming us into his presence and into into a relationship with him that is not just about us knowing him but it's about us being a part partaking together with him and it's a beautiful thing to do communion on a regular basis and i'm so glad that we have that opportunity to do it all right today we're going to continue in our series how many people have been enjoying our series about loving and looking at the Bible and looking at the example of the Good Samaritan? How many people have been enjoying this series that we've been doing? It's been great. It's been, it's been good just to, to, to take a few minutes. I, I love when we get to look at a story and we can look at the details in it and see, okay, what were some of the key points in that? And as we were looking at the, the, the Good Samaritan, we see that one of the key things that, that he had in his life was compassion. And he encountered the same person as the priest and the Levite did, but he saw him with compassion, and that compassion pushed him to act. And that's our example. That's, that's the example that Jesus said for us. He said, go and do likewise. The lawyer asked Jesus, who's my neighbor? And, 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 uh, and Jesus answered him with this parable. But at the end, Jesus said, go and do likewise. Live a life of compassion that not only sees, but has compassion and acts. And that's the, the example that Jesus has for us. Today, we're going to continue in that same series, uh, the same series along the lines of how to love and how to love one another but we're going to look at it from a little bit different perspective and this perspective is the perspective of how we can grow together you know god puts us in families some families are better than others some families are worse than others some families have problems and difficulties most families you know there's no perfect family but God puts us in families and God puts us in families so that we can grow together so that we can grow in community grow in relationship but he also puts us in spiritual families as well you know the disciples if we look at the example of the disciples the disciples were called by Jesus they didn't get to decide who they traveled with they, they were following Jesus, but they didn't get to decide. Peter didn't get to decide. He didn't look at Matthew and say, oh, I don't really like Matthew. Jesus, can you pick some, some other disciple besides him? I'm not really too fond of him. Maybe Peter thought, oh, these guys, James and John, they're okay. They're fishermen like me. But that guy, Matthew, I'm not really. No, he didn't get to decide. God puts us in families so that we can grow together. And growing together is an important part of our Christian life. We can be, we're, God, God never put us on this earth to live life by ourselves, to just be a good Christian by ourselves. But he put us in families. He put us in community. He put us in church. He called other people with us to grow together with us. 
And that's what we're looking at today. I want to read a verse talking about growing. And it's a, the verse that a lot of you guys probably have heard before. It's from Psalms chapter 1, verses 2 to 3. And it talks about a tree that is growing. Okay? It's in Psalms chapter 1, verses 2 to 3, it says, But his delight, this is talking about a man, and it says, at the beginning of Psalm chapter 1, it says, Blessed is the man who, and then it says all these different things. And then it goes into verse 2, it says, But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law he meditates day and night. He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that brings forth its fruit in its season, whose leaf also shall not wither, and whatever he does shall prosper. How many people want to be like this tree? How many people want to be like this tree? You're growing, you're planted by the rivers of living water, you're fruitful, your leaves are green all the time, never too dry, never the leaves falling off, but whatever he does prospers. How many people want to prosper in everything that you do? Yeah, I sure do, me too. Okay, I don't want to, you know, fail at stuff. I don't want to, you know, trip and fall. Nobody wants that. Okay, but this says, He shall be like a tree that is growing and planted by the rivers of living water. That is fruitful. Oh, don't please, please don't put that picture up just yet, okay? All right, thank you. I'll let you know. They're getting ahead of me. Maybe I need to hurry up. <clears throat> so this psalm is one that we talk about a lot when it talks about uh, growing together, being planted, and stuff like that. But I just want to take this simple illustration of a tree and look at it from a little bit different perspective, how we can grow together. Okay, let's say that together. Grow together. Say it again. Grow together. We can be like a single tree that's just growing up by ourselves. Okay, let's put up the first picture that I have there. The picture, yeah, that one. Okay, see, Okay, see, there's a whole bunch of trees on the right and the left, but there's that one tree in the middle, okay? So let's think about this one tree for a minute, okay? So here's a, a tree that is just growing by itself, okay? It looks pretty healthy. It's got probably got fruit on it. It's got leaves and everything like that. But God's plan for trees is for trees to grow in, 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 in groups. And for, for us to grow... As Christians, God wants us, for us to grow in groups too. Think about a tree that's like this. You can have one tree grown by itself, or you can have trees that are growing in a group. Can we go to the next picture? Okay, so here's a, a, a bunch of trees that are all growing together in a stand of forest or in a stand of trees. Or sometimes you think about a forest, and they're all growing, and they're all fruitful, and they're growing tall and everything. Did you know that when trees grow together, they generally grow taller than when one tree is just planted by itself somewhere. Because what happens is trees, when, when the, the sunlight is blocked, they start to grow taller to try to get to the sun. And so if there's a tree that's kind of blocking one of, one of a, a, a smaller tree that's growing, it'll actually grow up taller and faster to try and get to the sun so it can get the nourishment that it needs from the sun. And so when you have more trees growing together, there's a little bit of competition there, but they're actually helping each other grow and get taller than they normally would if they were just growing by themselves. If we think about that in our Christian life, we could probably grow okay, some of us could probably grow okay by ourselves. But when we're with other people, when we're meeting together in church, when we're talking about life together, when we're encouraging each other, how much faster and taller can we grow when we're with other people? That's the plan that God has for us as Christians, not to grow by ourselves, but to grow in a community, to grow in our small groups, to grow in our relationships with the people that we know and uh, sometimes work with or, or other Christians and stuff. When we can grow together, we'll grow up faster and we'll grow up taller 
because that's how we can encourage and, 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 and help each other to grow. Think about if you have one tree or a group of trees like this. What happens when there's a storm? Think about what happens when a storm comes. You see all these trees here. The storm comes from one direction. And the winds are blowing and the rain's coming and everything like that. But the trees on the outside can actually be like a shield for those trees on the inside to help them so that they don't get blown over. And if you have one tree, whatever direction the wind comes from, or whatever direction the storm comes from, that tree is going to get pushed around by the storm and by the wind. But if you have a stand of trees like this, a group of trees, if the rain or the wind is coming from one direction, well, the trees on that side can protect. But then if it shifts from another direction, well, the trees on the other side. So they can help each other and they can actually be a shield for each other and be a strength for each other as well. And when we're going through tough times, it's so good to be able to have those people around us who can help us, who can be a shield for us sometimes or be a strength to us sometimes. If you're going through a difficult time, it's so important that you have people that you can say, I, I really need prayer today. I really need help. I'm really going through some stuff. I'm trying to make a, a, a big decision or I'm having this problem with my parents or having this issue. Please help me. Pray for me. We can stand together. We can be a strength when the storm's coming. But not only the trees from the outside help, but the trees from the inside can also be a strength to hold up those other trees that are being pushed by the wind. And so the trees on the outside help to shield the trees on the inside, but the trees on the inside help to support when those other trees are being blown and pushed over as well. And so whether you're receiving the storm or whether, whether the, the wind is blowing you over or whether you're the person who, who, who stands, tr st stands tall and helps to support the others, there is strength when we stand together. If there's just that one tree, you've probably seen sometimes when trees get blown over and the winds are too hard or too strong and eventually that tree falls over and you see the tree knocked over or sometimes it's, maybe it's broken or something or sometimes you see it fall over and its roots are completely up out of the ground and and but if that tree maybe if that tree was in a, a group of trees like this maybe it would have that strength from those other trees that are around us god's encouragement for us today is to make sure that we're growing together growing in community because God puts us in families. He puts us in community for a reason. Another point about trees, and if you, you know, at, talk to people who grow trees, they're botanists or stuff like that, you, sometimes when, act, when trees actually are, are close together, they can actually, their, their branches begin to touch each other. And after a, a certain length of time, they can actually grow into each other and become connected as a tree. And so sometimes you'll see pictures. You can go into to, to Google and look at look for pictures. Sometimes you'll see two trees that are growing up and their branches end up touching, but then they actually become connected together. And you know, over time as we spend more time with each other and as we spend more time connect, uh, 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 getting to know people and, and with each other and living in community, we can actually become connected. And there's actually a scientific word for this. It's called inosculation. And it's when those tree branches get connected together. But it doesn't happen a lot. It happens from time to time. But there's another place where it happens more often, and that's underground. When you have many trees all planted together, their roots start to grow into each other and they start to get connected. And the, the, the roots of one tree will go over this direction and the roots of the other tree will come over here and the roots of this other tree will come together. 
and they form a foundation together that when the wind comes and the rain comes, even if it was strong enough to blow over a tree, because the roots are connected together, it can't blow that tree over because it's not only has its roots, but it's connected to this tree, it's connected to that tree, it's connected to that tree. And that's what God wants for us as we grow together. Sometimes we see the connection. Oh yeah, these persons, these two people, they have a great connection. They're really good friends. But you know what? Even if you don't see the connection on the outside, there's actually a deeper connection underground. There's a deeper connection. We're connected together. Even though maybe we don't spend a lot of time talking together or, or this, we're all part of the same family. We're part of the New Life Fellowship family. We're connected. And when we stay faithful, when we stay connected in the church, our roots go deep and we're a strength to each other and we can grow and be fruitful together and we can, we can do all the things that God has for us together. Amen? There's a verse in the Bible. You've probably heard it before. It's Hebrews 10 verse 25. Do not forsake the assembling of ourselves together, as is the manner of some, but exhorting one another. That word exhort means it's something that we do. It says exhort one another. Okay? And that word exhort, it means to call, to comfort, to encourage, to desire, to pray. All of these things are things that we need to be doing together. It's not so much the, the leaders of the church or I need to wait for this person or that person. No, we're connected. This verse encourages us to do it one to another. God has put something within each one of us that we need together to continue to grow together. And it says, don't just do it now, but it, this verse says, and so much more do it, the more as you see the day approaching. Okay? So this verse tells us there's going to be more and more difficult days ahead. Do not neglect this. Don't be like a tree that's just out by itself. It's going to get blown over. But be connected. Be connected. Be connected in the church. Be connected in small groups. Be connected in relationships. Open up your heart. Let people know you. We need each other. Why don't you turn to your neighbor and say, I need you. Turn to your other neighbor and say, you need me. So I want to encourage you today. Let's be intentional about connecting with other people. Let's be intentional. Let's make a decision. I'm not going to be the tree all by myself. I'm going to be connected. Okay, make a decision. When we have to be intentional about something, that means that our nature is that we don't really want to do it. But being intentional says, I'm going to make a decision, and I'm going to be connected with people. Maybe just spend. Just say, okay, this week, being intentional means I'm not going to leave church right away. I'm going to stand around for 10 minutes and talk to people. Maybe that's one way you can be intentional. Maybe it's just sending a text to your friend and say, hey, how's it going? Reconnecting with people you haven't connected with in a while. Okay, so there's different things that we can do. Maybe it's go for a coffee with somebody. You know, you have your lunch break or, uh, you know, you have your time from work. Connect with somebody. Say, okay, can we do lunch this week? You know, it doesn't have to be a big deal. Just whatever. Another way you can be intentional is to join a small group. Join a small group. If you haven't been in a small group, get in a small group. Okay? If you don't know of any small groups, we have people who uh, can help you. Go to the uh, information counter out there. There'll be tons of people who would be able to help you get connected and help you to grow together. How many people want to make a decision that says, I'm going to grow? And I'm going to grow together. Yeah, is that good? All right, let's stand up together. All right, let's bow our heads and pray. Heavenly Father, today we say before you that I'm going to grow. 
We say in your presence and before you that I'm going to grow together. God, help me. Help me in my relationships. Help me in, 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 in being that person who can encourage and call and comfort and, 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 and be a strength to people who are all around me. Help me to be somebody who puts roots down deep and gets those roots connected together so that when the storms of life come, I don't have to worry because I got this person around me, I got that person around me, my roots are deep, I'm not going to be blown over. God, most of all, thank you for Jesus. Thank you that we have that common ground, that common salvation, that common hope together. And we know that as we stay connected to you and connected to each other, we'll continue to grow all the days of our lives. Thank you so much for your faithfulness, God. We give our lives to you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Don't forget about small groups. Get in a small group. If you need prayer today after service, we have this. We have our prayer room, just that door there off to your left. Uh, you can get, get prayer. And we also have places to put your tithes and offerings like we do every week. God bless you guys, and we'll see you all next week. Amen.